All right, part 12. In this video, we're finally, finally going to take care of those detail lines. I know you guys have been waiting for this video. Uh, I get the messages all the time about the detail lines, so uh, it's finally time to take care of those in this video. But first, I want to show you guys what I have done when I left off in part 11. I was doing the spot putty work. Uh, so this is basically all the spot putty work that I've done. You can see anywhere on here that's that red color, that's the spot filler. Okay, you may have to do more, you may have to do less on your helmet depending on how bad or how good it is. I had to do a, quite a bit in the back here with the spot filler. Uh, by the way, I did carve in that uh, top indentation again. If you remember, that wasn't here in the last video. I just marked that out with some masking tape and uh, got there with my files, cut the line, and then just sort of sanded down in the middle to, uh, to bring that level down. I've gone over the whole thing with 150 grit paper. I didn't want to go any uh, smoother than that because we are still going to have to prime this again and you don't want it too smooth because you want your primer to still be able to stick to this really good. I've got a little bit more work to do before I get this primed up and we take care of those detail lines. Uh, what I'm talking about is this back indentation here at the bottom this right here. Uh, I can't believe it took me until now to realize that that is not accurate. Uh, it does not sink in that far into the sort of neck area of the helmet. It's basically just as deep as this one here pretty much uh, on the real helmet. So this is going in way too far. This piece isn't even on here, okay? This is basically just left open on the real helmet and uh, the spine or the neck area sort of keys up into there. So we're going to get that taken care of and at the same time we're going to get the edge along the bottom here all taken care of uh, nice and uh, rounded to follow along the shape of the helmet. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, we'll get this thing primed up again and we'll finally take care of these detail lines. So let me get my Dremel here and we'll take care of that bottom real quick and we'll get to moving on with the helmet. Okay guys, I've been working on the bottom of the helmet here, getting the opening cleaned up a little bit on this side. Uh, what I basically did was just use my compass again. I set that to the width that I wanted and I would hold that along the helmet and just draw it along. That'll give me the same exact contour of the outside of the helmet uh, for the inside here so that the opening matches up perfectly.
here's the helmet opening after I've got all the sanding done so it's nice and smooth now even all the way around that's ready to go I'm going to get a coat of primer thrown on this and I'll bring back the video we can start on these lines alright I've got the coat of primer on the entire helmet once again it's looking pretty good I think there are still a couple areas that I'll have to spot fill some more but uh, I can take care of that at the very end so this is all nice and dried now this primer has been drying for a couple days so uh, we can now finally get started on fixing these lines alright guys the first thing that I'm going to do to take care of these lines and straighten these out is uh, I'm going to get in here with a Dremel I have the little cutting wheel on my Dremel I'm going to get in here and sort of get all the primer out uh, this thing's had a couple coats of primer sprayed on it by now, so these lines are full of primer. I'm going to get in there, grind that primer out, roughen these up a little bit inside there, uh, because we are going to be filling these right back in with Bondo, and it'll stick a lot better if they're roughened up. So let me get my mask on. I'm just going to take out a little bit, okay? I'm not trying to cut these in any deeper. Uh, I'm just getting the primer and junk out of there. Now that I got the lines cleared out with the Dremel, I've gone ahead and I've just run some masking tape on either side of my lines. Uh, what I'm going to do is fill these in with Bondo now. And I'm just trying to keep this as neat as I can at this point. You don't have to add the tape. You can just smear the Bondo and, uh, you know, fill these in and scrape off the excess. Uh, that's just my OCD. I'm trying to keep this as neat as I can for right now. So I'm going to get some Bondo mixed up and I'm going to fill in all of these lines and when I do it uh, I'm going to make sure that I really force the Bondo in there. Uh, I don't want any air bubbles or air pockets uh, in these lines anywhere. If you can look back here, I don't know if you can tell or not on camera, uh, but some of these lines they might be real shallow like right here and then by the time you get over here they're I don't know they're like a half an inch deep uh, so this all needs to be filled in nice and solid so really force the Bondo in there and uh, scrape off as much of the excess as you can uh, because remember all this is basically finished uh, except for the lines so uh, you know you want to scrape off the excess you don't want to have to do too much sanding uh, so I'm going to get some Bondo mixed up and we're going to fill these right in. I'm just going to sand these down with 100. Okay, I'm not going all over. I'm not using a big block. I'm just using the edge, okay, of my block here. And I'm basically just hitting the lines. There's no need to go around this whole thing again. It's already been sanded. Uh, we just need to bring the level of the lines down. 
even with the rest of the helmet. I've been working on this side, sanding down the lines. I've got them pretty much where they're smooth. I can't really feel them if I rub my hand across. Uh, so they're smooth now, but because this was already primed before we filled the mill with Bondo, you still have that contrast in color, the primer versus, in my case, the grain of the Bondo. Uh, so I can still see where my lines are even though they're full. I can still use these as a guide uh, as to where to recut the lines straight this time. I added some spot filler all along my lines here after I bonded them in. I'm just going to sand those down now with some 150 grit paper. Uh, just like the rest of the helmet, I finished with 150 before I primed. I'm going to do the same here. Uh, get 99% of the spot filler off and uh, we can move on. Here's before the sanding and after. Notice how much of that spot filler is gone. This is now perfectly smooth. I can't feel any lines here, uh, but I can still see them, which is the whole point. And waiting till now to fill these in, that they're smooth and that I can still see them, so that I can still use them as a reference. You can buy pinstripe tape, uh, pinstripe masking tape already cut. Uh, but for as much as I'm going to need, maybe uh, three feet, uh, I'm just going to cut my own. Got my straight edge on the tape where I want it. Mark this out for about a sixteenth of an inch wide uh, strip of tape here. I have a brand new nice sharp blade on my X-Acto. And I'm just going to cut this out. We can use that as our guide. I'll make a couple of these, maybe three or four. Okay, that's what I'm going for right there. Just a thin strip of tape. I've just about gotten all my tape lines run. You can see now that I did have to make some adjustments. Uh, even though the lines on this helmet, uh, when it was made out of the paper and all that, were already there, uh, they still were off. You can see this one was off about maybe an eighth of an inch uh, that I had to sort of kick it forward to, uh, to make everything line up the way it should. Uh, over here, it was pretty much spot on. Uh, so you will still have to do a little bit of adjustments. You can see up top here, uh, this was off a little bit. Okay, over here in this corner. Uh, the back, uh, the back was not really off. Uh, you can still see where the line sort of uh, came down here. Uh, that line did have a bit of a curvature to it, but I didn't like that, so I made a level line which actually doesn't slope down a little bit, it's straight across. If you look at this from the right angle, it is a perfectly straight line, uh, like you took a saw blade and just cut right into this. Uh, so that's where that's at. Uh, I just have this side left to, uh, to run my tape on. I'm going to do that now. I have a piece here ready. Uh, the good thing about this is uh, these sides, you can't look at both sides at once. Uh, so if your lines are a little bit off, uh, it's not really going to be that critical as long as they're close uh, because you can't compare them. You can't look at both sides at the same time on this helmet. You either have to look at the right side or the left side. Okay, so I'm just going to run this and line it up. Okay, so there's that line. See that didn't take long, wasn't hard. 
Uh, now if I go over to the other side, I'm just going to take a look at it and pretty much eyeball it. Uh, how it looks, uh, to me, it looks pretty well spot on. Uh, so I'm going to say that that's okay. Let me trim off the excess here. Uh, I have yet to do the, uh, the chin. Uh, I'm not going to bother taping this off here. I'll just draw my lines on with a pencil since this is already all primed. So what I'm going to do now is just hit these areas up with a little bit of primer and I'm going to peel the tape off and we can start carving these lines which are now straight where we want them. Uh, we can start carving these into the helmet then. Okay, now to cut these lines into the helmet, this is what I'm using, guys. Just a needle file, plain and simple, all hand work and needle file work. Uh, you can use a Dremel if you want. Uh, I guess it just depends on how precise and sharp and clean and crisp you want these lines. If you want to just put the cutting wheel on your Dremel and try and you know do that that way, uh, feel free you're never going to get as clean or as crisp or straight of a line with a Dremel going 30,000 RPMs as you are with your hand and a needle file taken little by little off. So there's really no trick to it guys just a steady hand and taking a little bit off at a time with your file. Have a sharp needle file when you're doing this. Uh, if you have a file that is dull is going to make this ten times harder. Uh, these files are only a couple dollars, especially if you go to like Harbor Freight Tools or something. You can get a whole set of these, I think twelve for like three bucks. Uh, so, if you have to get a brand new one just to cut these lines, I would suggest it. Uh, it definitely will make your life a lot easier and it's going to give you a better result too. You're going to get your sharper crisper lines using a, a sharp tool than you would something dull so uh Just going to give this line one final pass in each direction. Go right to left with my file, and then I'll go left to right just in case there's a little variation in the file. Go from either side, my entire length of my line. And that's going to about do it. I'll clean it out. That's going to just about finish that line up. Uh, again, it's the same for all the lines on the helmet. Guys, anywhere there's a straight line on the helmet, of course I used a ruler to help me to guide my file. I did not use this huge ruler here. I have a little 6 inch scale, but uh, I can't find it at the moment. But yeah, anywhere there's a straight line, these three here, one, two, and there's a little one there. Uh, I would just use my smaller scale and hold that where I wanted it and basically just use my file 
and run that along it. Use the uh, the ruler as a guide. Of course, uh, it only makes sense to do that. Uh, so I did that for those three, and I also did that uh, for these straight lines here uh, on the bottom of the helmet and the chin. Okay, that's just about going to do it. Uh, all I have left to do are these two cheek lines here, and on the other side, of course, I'm going to throw a coat of primer on here, and uh, we'll pick it up in the next video. I'll have this primed. And uh, part 13, what we'll do is we'll add the ears, we'll add these teeth sections on, we will add all of these screw details to the face plate uh, over here up top. We have to add the little pivot point that goes on the jaw here. Uh, another screw detail goes back here, somewhere around in here. Uh, we'll do that, and maybe we'll even cut this rear panel out uh, so we can put the thing on our head. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I know it's been a really long time uh, coming for this video. Uh, I'm going to prime this up and probably tomorrow get started on those uh, other details, the screws and all that, and start making the video for that. So you guys are not going to have to wait like you had to for this video. I am uh, working on this now, obviously. I do have some projects. Uh, some side projects going on. I don't know if you can see over there. There's the uh, Red Ranger helmet. Uh, doing a repaint on that for a customer. So uh, that's in my spare time. Also, uh, a couple people have asked me, am I going to mold and cast that helmet? The Iron Man helmet, of course. There I have all the stuff left. Um, I've had that stuff for a good while now, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that. Uh, I do not know how much they're going to cost. I don't know, you know, uh, when I'm going to have that done. If I'm going to make a video on the uh, the molding process, the casting process, all that. That's still up in the air. But uh, yes, I will be molding this, and yes, I will have copies available at some point. Uh, all that stuff there is, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of uh, silicone and uh, casting resins and all that. So. I uh, definitely didn't spend that much money on it just to uh, let it sit there in the corner. But uh, for right now, this is where the helmet's at. Uh, we'll pick it up on part 13. Hopefully I'll get it out there uh, as quick as I can. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to finish up these uh, cheek lines here, prime it, and uh, we'll bring it back. I'll see you guys on the next video.